boy, welcome to object oriented programming. But once you get it, you're going to love it. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's trace the whole program one more time and then run it, okay? Main method, number one. I'm going to go ahead and just comment this out so we don't confuse ourselves, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this main method that, in a sense, is going to instantiate a class that I've created down here. And in this class, I have all types of methods that can run that can help me out, all right? So I instantiate it under the name my who is, and I stick in the parameter Steve. That's that name there. Steve's going to go into who is who, and now I actually want to run the method saying inside of who is who. So I use my is dot saying, which will run that method. This is called dot syntax. It's extremely powerful and it allows me to take that instantiated variable who is and access any of the methods inside of who is who uh, by using the dot. So I can access any of the methods. So if I look at saying, I hit my control key, roll over that, see how it highlights? Click on that, that takes me to who is who and it will run this method. Absolutely, it pulls in the method from the other code. If I want to create another method, now, I'm going to hit my control alt, alt key and page down. One second. And say I want to call that method uh, uh, not saying, for example. And then I save that. If I go back to my program main method, and I'm going to hit my uh, control alt key and page down. One, one second. Okay, now let me, let me go back to who is and make sure I saved that. Okay, good, saved. Go to main method. Now, if I hit a dot right there, I should get some code hinting up. I get all this code hinting come out. Now, let's see if my, the method not saying is in there. There it is right there. There's saying, there's not saying. You see that? I have access to all the different methods in that class, and I can run all those different methods using the dot syntax. This is what's so powerful about um, Java and about object-oriented programming. This is the first time you've seen it. I don't expect you to get it. But after you see it over and over again, eventually uh, it'll make sense to you. Okay? So let's go ahead and just run this program and see what we get printed out to the screen. And bring up our console. And it printed out who is who is Steve. Because I put the name Steve in there. Okay? And it put Steve. Now if I change this to, to what? John? Say to John. And I'm going to run it again. Let's save it and run it. Then it's going to print out who is who John. It does that by sticking that name into the constructor and running the method within that constructor method and returning John. Now, but I want to instantiate a totally different uh, instance of that class. And I can do that by uh, just basically uh, taking my who is who class, using it kind of as the strict type idea, right? Now we're using strict type idea. Strict typing that as my who is who two. It's who is who two is a totally different variable uh, than who is who uh, without the two. And then I just declare that, and then I run the method within who the instantiate method within who is who two two. So now in this case, Doug and John are not going to get confused because these are different instantiations of the constructor class. So let's run this. And who is who is John, and who is who is Doug. Now Bucky Bucky does this with a tuna, and uh, I forget what fish example, and then he. And then he goes further and does it with his girlfriends. And he goes for his first girlfriend and his second girlfriend. <laughs> okay, great. And you know, it's the same, total same concept. And so I think what we ought to do is go there. Let's, let's have you play the video. And then is that's when you, and we're done, by the way. This is all the code for today. Excuse me. This is not handled by MIT, nor is the switch case. But this is the more advanced stuff. And we're going to, next time, what we're going to do is going to hit looping. And hopefully we can start getting to some interface work after that. Let's go ahead and go ahead and have you take the screen back, play that video, and we'll go through that together. I think we're done with today's les lesson, so I'm going to go ahead and save this and stop. And we'll catch up with this on next next we'll we'll catch you next time with the videos, okay?